in the house of the Lord to worship Him in spirit and in truth. You have your Bibles with you, I would ask that you turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're just going to lift up one verse this Lord's Day. And I'm going to take the liberty this morning to read from the NASB. The NASB. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 11, I'll begin reading. It says, therefore, encourage one another and build up one another just as you also are doing. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And we are continuing in this particular thread with the tag on this particular text, the coming day of the Lord, and this is part five. The coming day of the Lord, part five. And in Acts chapter four, verse 36, there is a man who is mentioned there by the name of Joseph. And the thing about this, this man named Joseph is he was also called Barnabas. And Barnabas' name means son of encouragement. Barnabas served as an encourager to many in the faith during his lifetime. And his namesake meant that he was the kind of person who had the ability to inspire courage in those who needed it the most. And you know what else? We all need a Barnabas in our lives. When the waves of life began to rage in our lives. We need a Barnabas in our lives. When we find ourselves failing, but yet still moving forward, we need a Barnabas in our lives. Even when we are grieving. When our hearts are heavy, we need a Barnabas in our lives. Beloved, we, we need people who are around us, who will encourage us during those times in life where the situation seems so difficult for us to even encourage ourselves. Yes, we, we need folk like Barnabas. We, we need folk who will give us comfort. We need people who will give us courage. Yes, we, we need people in our lives to stimulate us to keep on keeping on in the face of adversity. Yes, we, we need people. And I believe, beloved, sometimes it's good for us to, to hear someone tell us, brother, you hang on in there. Sister, you, you hang on in there. I know it's difficult for you during this season in your life, but you, you just hang on in there. Yes, I, I know the pain may be unbearable in your life right now, but hang on in there. Because to be honest, beloved, there are times in, in all our lives where courage becomes difficult to muster. There are times in all our lives where courage gets low in our lives. And when courage gets low in our lives, discouragement begins to creep into our minds. And when 
discouragement begins to creep into our minds, we will begin to feel hopeless. Oh no, don't ever believe that you have mastered the faith so much to the point that a bout of discouragement will not come into your life from time to time. And when those bouts of discouragement begin to come into our lives, you know what? We can feel like the cowardly lion in the Wizard of Oz. Y'all remember the cowardly lion, don't you? And the cowardly lion, his, his thing that he needed the most was as he stuttered, Courage. Mm -hmm. and, and beloved, sometimes when life hits us in the gut, when life begins to hit us in the chest, what we need is courage. Amen. Amen. And let's face it, beloved, let's, let's face it. We are, we are in church today and, and we know that we are living in a world where there is an ongoing wave of sources that just come from everywhere which seem to discourage us. And when this happens, beloved, we can fall deeper and deeper into a pit of discouragement. And when it comes to the sources of discouragement, sometimes the discouragement can be us. It could be self. Sometimes when we think about bad things too much and dwell on negativity too much, the discouragement can come from self. It can come from within. Sometimes the discouragement can come from society at large. When we see what's going on in our world today, Yes, it can bring about a great deal of discouragement. Sometimes discouragement comes because of suffering. Yes, nobody is immune from suffering. Nobody will get out of this world with a, with a suffering free card. We all got to go through some suffering. Amen. And, and we, beloved, we got to learn how to suffer well. Because this life, if you are in Christ Jesus, is not the only life this is. Yeah, we're not living for this life. We're living for the next one. And so sometimes discouragement can come in through sin. Whether it be our own personal sin or whether it be the sin of others who sin against us. If you are a true believer, a true child of God, when that happens, discouragement comes in. And again, I can't continue to say it more and more, or say it enough, but the truth is, we all get discouraged sometimes. And beloved, when we look at this text this morning, what we find is uh, the one another passages, one of the many one another passages and the reason I believe this text this morning is important for us is because the one and other passages of Scripture are often overlooked. They are overlooked responsibilities that we have towards one another in the body of Christ, specifically in the area when it comes to our need to encourage one another. Yes, encourage one another, or as the text says, encourage one another and build one another up. And so when we are looking at this text, we got to understand that there's a backdrop to the text because uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to this young church, this young group of saints, and now he's calling them into action to remind them of their need to encourage one another and build up one another. And after all, the Apostle Paul, if there's anybody who can speak on the need to be, to, to be encouraged, it's the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was uh, uh, Barnabas, whom we mentioned a few minutes ago, who when Paul was converted to the faith, he came alongside of the Apostle Paul to encourage him. And so the words one another 
are about each for the other. The words one another are about our relationship with one another. The words one another should remind us of our need to be reciprocal in our relationships with each other. And so the one another passages are very important for us to study and to use as a means to help us to become better disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there are many one another passages. We're just looking at one today, but there are many. And there are many that Christians are called to do. One, for example, is found in James chapter 5, verse 16, where it says we've been called to confess our sins to one another. Yes, we have been called to teach and admonish one another. As Colossians 3.16 teaches us, we have been called to pray for one another. As James 5.16 teaches us, and we've been called to serve one another. As Galatians 5.13 teaches us. And so when we look at this text before us again today, the text says, encourage one another and build up one another just as you also are doing. And so these one another's in this particular verse that is before us this morning are a call to mutual encouragement. Not only mutual encouragement, it's a call to mutual edification. See, a relationship that is one-sided is an unhealthy relationship. Amen. See, it just can't be about what one person wants in a relationship. Yeah, it just can't be about what I want. It has to be about what the other person wants as well. And so it's about mutual encouragement, mutual edification. And so one of the first things that we notice when we look at this passage is the word therefore. And whenever we see the word therefore, one of the first questions we need to ask ourselves is, what is the word therefore, therefore? And the word therefore is there because of what Paul has already been teaching this particular church First and foremost, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, where these saints, they had questions. Like we have questions. We have questions about certain truths of the faith. And they had questions about what happens to loved ones who die in the Lord before Jesus comes. They, like we, needed to know that the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up with them together in the clouds of the air to meet the Lord in the air. And Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18, he says, Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And the word therefore in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18 is the same. The word, not the word therefore, but the word encourage rather in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18 is the same word for encourage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 11. We have to encourage one another. We have to comfort one another because when we comfort one another, we are saying there is nothing, absolutely nothing. I know what you're going through, but there's nothing. Let me remind you, there is nothing that can separate us from the Amen. love of God Amen. that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So even if life knocks us down, 
We got to encourage one another. We got to comfort one another. Even if we become hard pressed on every side, we got to encourage one another. We got to comfort one another. When we have tears in our eyes and pain in our heart, we got to encourage one another. We got to comfort one another until Christ comes. Uh -huh. And so understand the therefore. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, is not only referencing what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18, but it's also referencing what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Because the saints at Thessalonica still had more questions. Y'all know how it is, how we get on Bible studies of the evenings, way, even going way back and even up till now. Folks still have questions. Okay. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with asking questions. And so they had questions. And one of the questions that they had when you get to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 is they wanted to know about epics and times. They wanted to know when, when Jesus is going to come back. I've been seeing folk die in the Lord, and I've been hearing folk talk about Jesus is coming, but what time, what season is Jesus going to return? And so Paul begins to unpack that for them. He begins to, to answer that question by telling them that uh, the day of the Lord, not the Lord's day, we worship on the Lord's day. But the day of the Lord, that is different from the Lord's day. The day of the Lord is a day of judgment. And he began to tell them that the day of the Lord is going to come like a, a thief in the night. It will be a time where, where folk will be saying peace and safety, safety and peace. And it will be a false sense of safety and peace. Paul even compared it to a woman who was travailing in labor. And since the coming of the day of the Lord would be unexpected, people needed to be ready. Yeah, Paul didn't get into date setting. He didn't pull out his calendar and say that the, that the Lord was going to come on this day at 10 a.m. Yeah. He said, no, you simply need to be ready. That's right. That's right. And beloved, I pray that we all Already, Because nobody is going to be able to escape the coming wrath of God. Yet Paul assured these saints that this wasn't for them. Aren't you glad to be in the Lord Jesus yes. Christ? Aren't you glad that the Lord is going to keep you from that wrath that is to come upon the earth? Now Paul said this, is, this wasn't so for them because uh, they were children of the day. Children of light. God, beloved, we need to know and understand and get this in our heart, flowing in our bloodstream, that God has saved us and our salvation is secure in him. Yes, yes. and although he saved us and although our salvation is secure in him, he has saved us to be lights shining in this dark world. And so, beloved, we need to remain alert and sober by having the breastplate of love and faith already on. Mm -hmm. We need to be alert and sober by having the helmet of hope, which is the helmet of salvation on. For the Lord has not appointed us for wrath. The Lord has appointed, the Lord has destined us for salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Amen. So the blessing is, you know, it really doesn't matter what time the Lord is going to come. come on, yeah. It really doesn't matter what day the Lord is going to come. You know what else? It really doesn't matter if you just want me to be truthful about it. It doesn't matter if you die before the Lord okay. comes or if you are alive if the Lord comes because what really matters is if you are in him yeah, say it now. That's right. and if you are in him you're going to spend 
eternity with him. And not even the grave can hold us. And so, beloved, we should be confident in knowing that, that Jesus has not forgotten about us. So we're going to be with him forever when he comes again. But when we observe this text, Paul says, therefore, encourage one another. And I believe when we look at this whole idea of what it means to be encouraged, I believe the writer of Hebrews said it best when he wrote in, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling as the assembling of yourselves together as in the as is the matter of some, but encouraging one another. And yet all the more as we see the day drawing near. That word for encouragement in Hebrews 10, 25 is the same word for encouragement in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11. And, and, and just for, for, for my technical people, the word is parakaleo. Para, meaning alongside of. Kaleo, meaning to call. To admonish, to exhort, to comfort, to encourage. We come alongside of a brother or a sister in Christ to encourage them. And as we see the day of the Lord coming, as we see it drawing near, we're going to have to have a sense of urgency concerning how we encourage one another. And beloved, this means the purpose of us assembling together is not for us in general. The primary purpose for us assembling together is for us to worship the Lord. But after we understand that, that the primary purpose is vertical, we have to move to the horizontal, and that is for us to encourage one another. Yes, as our world gets darker and as our world gets colder, we're going to need the warmth of each other's encouragement. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who are sitting in nursing homes this morning right. who need the warmth of encouragement. There are a lot of folk who are sitting and convalescing at home this morning who need the warmth of God's encouragement that they receive from us being his representatives here on earth. And so we need to be about the business of encouraging one another because there's no such thing as a long range of Christians. There's no such thing as a Christian who does this thing all by themselves. You can't do this in isolation. You, you can't grow as a Christian and be what God has for you to be in the body of Christ, being a hermit Christian. Yes, we got to come and gather together. I know we can't gather together now because of the obvious reasons. But yet, beloved, we need to do all we can to be a means of encouraging one another. Because the truth of the matter is, is we're going to continue to experience some hard times. We got some difficult days ahead of us, and so we don't have to be encouraging one another. We're going to have to encourage one another when we go through tough times. And as the writer of Hebrews emphasizes, all the more as we see the day, the day of the Lord drawing near. And I believe the words of Hezekiah Walker fit right there. Because Hezekiah Walker said it best when he said, I need you. You need me. Yeah. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It's his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. See, that's the kind of mindset that we're going to have to have, beloved, as we live out our faith during these difficult times because we can't do it by ourselves. We 
don't need each other. We not only mutually encourage one another, we mutually build up or, as the text says, yeah, build up or edify one another. And building one another up is a call to help other folk grow in Christ. It's not only a call to help other folk grow in Christ, it's a call for us to grow in Christ. Yes, we are saved, but we still need to grow. We saved, but we still need to grow. Mm -hmm. And the Apostle Peter, he, he said it this way. He said regarding growth, he said in 2 Peter 3 and 18, he said, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what, what, what the Apostle Peter is laying down right here in 2 Peter 3.18 as it connects itself with 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11 as it, in the vein of building one another up is there are at least two areas that we need to be growing in if we're going to build folk up. And that is grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Growing in grace by learning to put a face on grace. You know, it's coming to the realization, if you have not already come to the realization that, you know, where you at today is not where you always been spiritual. Yeah. And not only where you at today is not where you always been spiritually, but there are some folk who are, who have not got where you at today. And, and where you at today spiritually today did not happen by accident. Right. It was folk who were coming alongside of you, giving you grace to grow. Yeah. Giving you grace by giving you space to grow. Being there to help you when we stumble and fail along the way. And even as we continue to stumble and fall along the way. We all need grace each and every day because the truth of the matter is, beloved, we all have been grace cases. Mm -hmm. And so we, be, we should be, be becoming more aware of what it really means to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we should be helping our brothers and sisters in Christ to grow by helping them to understand what it means to be or what it means to have knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we do this with a word and by the word. With a word and by the word. With a word in building somebody up is not using our words to tear somebody down. Yeah. With a word is, is like what uh, the, the writer in, in, in Proverbs 18 and 21 said when he says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Because with our words, we can speak life. Yeah. And with our words, we can speak death, but the pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Kind words have the ability to lighten a heavy heart. Yes, isn't it good when somebody speaks a kind word to you? Yeah. Kind words have the ability to strengthen those who may be weak. And so we have a mutual responsibility to build folk up with our words and with the word. Yes, the word meaning the word of God. It's like iron sharpening iron. It's the word of God that we need to use and ask God to let our words or his word and the word of our mouth be acceptable in his sight 
For the word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. But if you notice from this text, it says that they were already doing it. The text, it says specifically, just as you are, just as you also are doing. And the question we got to ask ourselves is, were they doing it perfectly? No. no. They weren't doing it perfectly. They were not encouraging each other perfectly. They were not building up one another perfectly. I don't know a church that does encourage one another perfectly and build up one another perfectly. Yet, beloved, we can get to work on it. Amen. We can work at it as we go in the faith and as we grow in the faith. In other words, we can work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling in the context of community. Because lest we forget, this young church was willing to work out their soul salvation within the context of community in the face of opposition and persecution. And this was a powerful witness to the world amongst each other of the power of Christ working in their lives. And so what stands out the most about this church is it lived as though they're right now counted forever. Yeah. I, didn't, I, don't, I didn't come up with that. I'm not original on that. I got that out of Table Talk Magazine where they always have a section in Table Talk Magazine that says uh, right now counts forever. And beloved, we have to live our lives as though our right now counts forever. Yeah. In other words, we got to live on tiptoe, in tiptoe anticipation, waiting for the Lord to return. Yet, beloved, while we are waiting, we don't want to be found unfaithful. Right. Now, we don't want to be found unfaithful. While we are waiting for the Lord, we want to be encouraging and building one another up. Yes, while we are waiting, we want to be the kind of people who deal with and face our challenges and temptations with courage and with the power of Christ. Mm -hmm. While we are waiting for the Lord to return, we want to live our lives as though Jesus could be coming at any day. And yes, beloved, while we're waiting, we're going to experience some discouragement. Mm -hmm. We're going to experience some pain. But yet, beloved, can I encourage you today to wait on the Lord mm -hmm. and be of good courage? Yeah. Can I encourage you to wait on the Lord because it's the Lord who's ultimately going to strengthen our hearts? Mm -hmm. Yes, we got to wait on the Lord. I know we're tired. I know we get weary. But we've got to wait on the Lord. We've got to wait on him to encourage us and strengthen our hearts even when we get faint. For I'm reminded that the prophet Isaiah said, even the youths shall grow faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait yes, upon the yes. Lord shall renew Amen. their strength. They shall mount with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. So we've got to wait on the Lord. For I consider that our, prefer our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed in us. So we got to endure until the glory revealed or to be revealed in us is a reality. Because the truth is, beloved, beyond our trials, there is eventually going to be triumph. 
beyond the variety of the trouble that we face in this life, we will experience victory because trouble don't last always. And since we know trouble don't last always, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Don't grow weary in well-doing, for we shall reap a harvest of blessings if we faint not. Yeah. So let me encourage you today to run the race that is set before you. And I understand your race may not be my race, and my race may not be your race, but we all got a race to run. Right. And while we are running our race, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Let us look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising his shame, and is now sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Yeah. Yes, look to Jesus with tears in your eyes because he's the Alpha and the Omega. Look to Jesus with discouragement in your heart because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Look to Jesus when you're grieving in your heart because he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Look to him because he's the God of all comfort. Look to him and give him the praise. Right. Yes, praise from the rising of the sun. Praise till the going down of the same. Listen, beloved, I want to tell you this. It's easy to praise God when everything is good. Mm -hmm. But you know what most folk are looking to see? They look in the sea. Yeah. If you still go crazy when things are going sour in your life. Yeah, are you still going to praise him when life hands you a limit? Are you still going to praise him with grief in your heart? Yeah, that's what the world is waiting for. And that's what we got to be willing to do. We got to be willing to praise him even when it's hard for us to do it. No wonder the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Not just sometimes, but all times, good times, bad times. Yeah. My soul, he yeah. said, shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, he says, and let us exalt his name together. And so, beloved, we got to praise the Lord. Praise him. Because when you praise him, God smiles down upon mm. praise. His, the praise that we give to the Lord is like a sweet savory incense in his nostrils and he is worthy of our praise. Amen. So remember as we trek through these difficult times we're going to have to be about mutually encouraging one another. Not only going to have to be about mutually encouraging one another but we're going to have to be about mutually edifying one another. We're going to have to work at building one another up yeah. and work at inspiring others and one another to have courage to face the difficulties of this life. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. And may heaven continue Amen. to smile Amen. upon you. Amen. And perhaps there may be somebody here today that you know we never want to take for granted. If somebody doesn't know Jesus as Savior, Lord, I, I never take that for granted. Um, and so one of the verses, there are many of them, but one of them that I'm fond of going to, that I typically go to each and every week, is Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. And if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that
Jesus Christ is Lord. And if God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's right. You better believe it. That if it comes a time that you have to die, that you can know for certain yeah. where you're going to spend eternity. Yes, yes. You can know for certain that if Christ has saved you, he's going to seal you. He's going to seal you to the day of redemption. And not even death can take that away from us. Amen. Amen. Because we have the victory. In Christ Jesus our Lord. So, if you want to know what it means to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have more questions. As I did when I became a new Christian, I had a lot of questions. Y'all got my email. You got my phone number. Call me up. I'll set aside a time to talk. And we'll sit down and we'll discuss what it means to be a follower. Of Jesus Christ. And don't be worried about what so and so going to say if you follow Jesus. You know, that was one of my greatest fears when I got saved. I used to like to hang out with the fellas, you know. And one of the things that I was scared of when the Lord saved me well over 20 something years ago is, man, I'm going I'm to have to. I'm going to have to quit hanging out with the fellas. I ain't going to be able to toss them back with the fellas no more. Right. So, once God gave me enough courage to get up and declare that he's my Savior and he's my Lord, I haven't looked back since. Because yeah. here's the truth. God will give you a new set of friends. Right. Yes, he will. He'll give you a whole new family to hang with. And so, beloved, don't be afraid to receive Jesus. We're going to sing our closing song.